hand drive thing that people do. I won't be able to do it if I look in there. Okay. <laughs> and welcome to Zoom Random. Hello, I'm Colin Cunningham, and today I am here with one of the most creative and talented creative engineers I, I do know, and his name is Philip Burgess, or Phil. Hello there. Or Phil B. How are you doing? I'm, I'm tired. Oh, tired all right. Is, tired is blue LEDs. Right, we were at Maker Faire Yeah, today. walking all day, all a weekend. Lot, a lot going on there. Yeah. Yeah, and now we're sitting in peaceful. <sighs> so, nice. so, 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 Phil, are you a big movie fan? Uh, now and then. Now, now and then. then. You yeah. make a lot of things, you're prolific. I don't know if you know that. I figured I'd let you know in case you didn't. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, it's Appreciate true. Appreciate that. Yeah. Objective view, you make a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, and very awesome stuff. Uh, but but you, you have made some things uh, which we would, fall, we would put under the uh, umbrella category of prop replicas. Among other things. Right, yeah. among many other things. Yeah. yeah, I thought maybe narrow the focus. Right, it was, right. It was a common thread right. among stuff I'd done. Right, yeah, a pretty strong common thread. So... Um, one of the most iconic things that you have you have made mm -hmm. uh, is the you recreated the time circuit from Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Are you a big Back to the Future fan? Uh, not like a huge nerd or anything. Marty. It, yeah, you know. It's, I just had to it's, do it's, my one impression. Yeah. I think anyone who grew up in that era, it's just kind of one of those. I don't think I've ever met anybody who doesn't like Back to the Future. I, I know one person who hasn't seen it. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, people, one person. To know it is to love it. Um, <laughs> but uh, this, this is um, basically like a, a seven-segment display dream. You know, Pretty it's much, like, yeah. It's like you didn't even have to need a really incredibly novel component. At the no, in of, fact, what happened... It's a celebration of segments. Yeah, segments. This, this, this thing showed up in the right. shop. And uh, it was during the uh, Ask an Engineer new product, mm. and the first first three colors of this seven segment. Oh, there it is. Mm. The um, this four digit seven segment display. We had green, yellow, red. Right. And uh, right. in you know the comments uh, on YouTube just lit up. Hey, you could totally do a Back to the Future. Class. So uh, people Th suggested that. This wasn't that right my idea. Bat? Yeah, really? it was right okay. off the bat. It's like yeah, you have to make a time circuit out of this. It's it's pretty interesting that those displays are now pretty iconic and symbolize 80s. 80s, yeah, I mentioned that in the guide. It's just like these yeah. are, it's I didn't kind of like, that until kind like, you like said Nixie it, yeah. tubes huh. kind of were iconic of a, of a previous right. generation. Right. Um, you know, the, the LED segmented displays are, are 80s iconic. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's dating me to, uh, to say that I didn't realize it until you said it. I'm like, oh yeah, it is totally 80s. I just think of it as alarm clocks. I mean, no. Yeah, 1208. Right, yeah. right. Wait, what's 1208? 1208 is uh, every um, alarm clock in the store. Mm. You know, they have the, the fake sticker on there oh. for, for the display. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's 12 always 1208. Why is it 1208? And I have no idea why it's 1208. Ooh. But Trivia I think I Get heard it. it was just, it shows off the display, all the segments best. Okay. While still showing a real time. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds that, you that's the story. You should get I've to heard. bed. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I, I did not know that. Anyway. You got a bunch of these. Uh, so the, seeing different colors of segment seven segments together triggered. Yes. DeLorean time circuit triggered. Um, yeah, I mean, it was those three perfect colors. Right. right. So it had to be done. And so it had to be done. And yeah, of hey, course, there, there's one now. And of course, yeah. you did it um, a complete with uh, the glasses. What do you, what do you call those? There? I oh, the. Uh, I, won't go on a I don't know what I don't know what they're called. Yeah. But you know, Doc Brown had them at the they're end of the movie. They're called non-functional. He'd been to the future. Right. And he comes back and he's wearing right. these. You know to us, opaque shades, right. and that's actually, I had made those out of, um, it's a thermoplastic um, called Sintra, and then just some adhesive uh, vinyl, which had that metal texture. <laughs> which is laid perfectly on it. It was, yeah, yeah I, was, I was real careful with it I to avoid the bubbles. Voice go up, yeah. Yep. It was, uh, yeah. Oh, gorgeous, yeah, I thought uh, opaque uh, visors were only reserved for robots, but okay, good to know. Uh, anyway, but so you you constructed this this is and you have it here yeah with I have, you. I have uh, the the version I built which actually isn't is not a precise replica of the film prop right pretty close though I get the the months right it's is actually it there's there's like a whole lot of things there's a whole right. lot of you know shortcuts that I took but um, something something that I do that maybe it would typify my 
my mode of design on things like this. Um, you know, there are there are prop build like replica prop builders. This is a fandom. There's a whole fandom of replica prop builders. Right, and it's a big scene. It is a whole spectrum, and you have people who will who will spend any amount of money to hunt down or produce an exact mm -hmm. replica. And at the other extreme, you have people that it's like, I'm going to dumpster dive this whole thing. And mm -hmm. if it's not precise, it doesn't matter. It's right. for fun. It's a different know? approach, but people do take that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'd say it's kind of like an 80-20 approach that I take. It's that most people look at this and say, wow, that is spot on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, I took a lot of shortcuts. So you, you can fool, you know, eighty percent of the people right. with like twenty percent of the effort. But some of the detail, the angle of the of oh yeah, of I did bezel. I did the the stepped bezel, the actual film one. This, of course, it's deeper. If you put this under the overhead camera, we could let's maybe do see that. It closer. Okay, good idea. Oh, it's gorgeous! Yeah, look at that. Boom. I mean, you, you've got a lot of details here, down to the the labels you colored in the edges right uh yes i sat there with a sharpie so you wouldn't get the white edge right. on the uh, those are printed out stickers that i made there's those details those and those little points go far really far and it's a and that's a spray printed acrylic yeah it's a laser cut acrylic because as i say when you have a laser cutter it's that everything's everything looks like a nail everything looks like an acrylic yeah exactly right. um but yeah, and then I just spray painted it with, uh, there's, I don't remember who makes it, a hammered metal finish spray paint. I know, it's right? It's actually available, okay. So yeah, that's it, a thing. Is it like thing. spit irregularly in order to get a pattern? Yeah, or? it's really weird. Huh. Um, it, there's like multiple layers of paint in there that mm. like coagulate. Very strange. Um, so yeah, I did, I did take some liberties with the design, and then there were other things that I got really persnickety about, like those labels. Um, so there's there's some precise details and some just just winging it because to like the layperson they'll look at it and think hey that's spot on mm -hmm. and it people seem to like it. What you said uh, you, when you wrote on it you said that the original had uh, what the months were like actually not real. Yes, the um, the month in the, in the display. Movie. Um, there's another picture we have that shows an i an iPad app. Which is, uh, yeah, that more closely okay, resembles right. the, uh, the film prop. Um, you can see they separated month and date. And the month is, is um, you know, letters, not numbers. But if you look, if you look at the dates, um, when, they, when they did it in the film, um, that was not a functioning prop. And what would happen is the display would turn off he'd punch in some numbers and then they'd cut to the display blinking on. Mm -hmm. And what they did is that month was a, um, a little piece of glass that they back painted. Um, they, they either didn't have access to or maybe they just didn't exist at the time, uh, those 14 segment right. um, displays for the month. So they, they just made these fake ones out of glass. But what happens... So much more effort. Yeah, well, Actually, at the time, that was less effort than, mm. than doing it technologically. Right. But they didn't just have DigiKey or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you can't go to Mauser and mm -hmm. order, uh, order uh, you know, a DeLorean time clock. Mm. But there are a few moments where when the month changes from one to another, those segments do impossible things that a real 14-segment display mm -hmm. wouldn't do. You can almost see, if you look at the, the month of June, there's a mm. diagonal there, and you look at October, and there's a vertical bar. They're occupying the same space. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. And uh, that, that wouldn't happen. Yeah, so it's like, well, they took liberties, and I'm going to take right. liberties, too. And all the hardcore analysts of the film probably just, you know, like, uh, unwatchable. They, they uh, That huge continuity break. I, Tragic. Ugh. Spielberg. No, I, I just, no. Yeah. Doc Brown is just yeah. a genius. You know, right. he has some kind of I display that it, can do that. I would not that. put it past him. Exactly. It's gorgeous work. Tur turn Thank it you. in the overhead. Just turn it to the side so you can see the angle of the. Oh yeah, how I. Uh, yeah, no, you can see it there. See it, see it there a little bit. You know, the actual the actual film prop is, of course, you know, maybe I don't know an inch per step or something. Cause it was in the dashboard of the car. Yeah, much but I wanted a flat it. one. My idea was I could take this and go stick it on other things like a shopping cart right. or a baby pram or whatever. So I want something slim. It's just funny that wear way. it on a gold chain. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so instead of, because I don't have a DeLorean to put the thing into, right. so I, I... I don't either. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, 
I never got a picture of it. I was going to go stick it on one of the buses, mm -hmm. you know, ask the driver, can I just stick this here, take some no. pictures? Yeah, I, you don't do that. So, no. never got that picture. Right. It's a gorgeous thing. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and um, it's simple in a way, like I mean about the, you know, electronics. But still, it wasn't so simple to drive all those displays, right? Um, I mean, there it seems was, simple because it's like, it's just seven segments. But. Yeah, I mean, the, the little backpack driver board does simplify a lot of mm -hmm. that. But you can only have, normally you can address only eight of those displays. Mm -hmm. They have a, a little jumpers, you can set the address, and there's eight addresses. But mm -hmm. we have nine displays. And I came up with some kludge using the, um, you know, the I square C, like the clock line. I put it through a, um, I don't remember if it was an AND gate or something, mm -hmm. and just picked one of three sets of displays to drive, and the others just weren't getting a clock signal, so they ignore any data coming in. Okay, so, so it was just, set. just a kludgy multiplex right. kind of thing. There's a lot of ways you could do, it. you know, you could do like software or I square C for for one of them. Whatever makes you happy. Hey, it works. Yeah. Okay, so not to not to be outdone. Uh, this this is is probably my favorite. Uh, the HAL nine thousand. <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, again, again, it you know in explanation simple but highly well crafted, and it has an impressive presence to it. Yeah, oh, the, I think the picture there right. does better yeah, than, than the, holding holding the prop right. up. Well, we have that for reference. We can we can look closer. Yeah, right? this is another um, this is another thing that there was the new product. So this is this is a this is a source of ideas here. It really it's, it's is crowdsourcing. It, it ideas. really is, and it's pretty uh, awesome. Um, yeah, the, again these these buttons we started carrying them in like five colors right. or whatever. And how could you not look at that? Yeah, not everyone that looked great. at that picture and said, "Hey, that is totally Hell's Eye." Mm -hmm. and that's uh, undeniable, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, so I thought, yeah, I, I, I could make some kind of a uh, prop out of this. And I went looking up um, information on the original, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a website, the Replica Prop Forum, which is all for people that um, you know, do this sort of thing for fun. Mm -hmm. And people will analyze these things down to you know, a gnat's ass, uh, they're, they're just the only sources they have are basically just stills from like the HD. They, yeah, cuts they, of the they, video they will actually, you know, they'll take movie. stills and they'll find something else in the scene for scale mm -hmm. and and uh, reproduce the, the whole the whole uh, prop around that. And, and you, so I, you've referred to these uh, in one of your learn guides as hero props. That's generally um, well, a hero prop is like usually when they when they make a prop for a movie. Mm -hmm. um, they might, they'll make some number of them. Okay. Uh, you'll, it looks like there's just one, right, um, but they need you, you know, whatever it is. Um, like the time circuit. Or, yeah, like right. the time circuit, yeah. yeah. Um, Iron Man's armor, how about that one? Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like there's just one Iron oh, Man armor. Yeah. And actually they'll like crank out like a dozen, mm -hmm. a dozen of those suits. And what they do is they kind of sort them by like, okay, this one came out of the mold, like, just perfect, mm. and it has the perfect paint job. They call that the hero prop, because you oh, use okay. it like close-ups, or you know, if you have the actor's face right okay, there. so your best print, yeah. Yeah, and then you have all these you know, lesser and lesser qualities, and those get put on stuntmen, and they get beat up and mm -hmm. broken and whatever. Mm -hmm. So the hero prop is like the, the pristine cherry, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. Okay, all right, I misinterpreted it slightly, but now I'm clarifying. It's all good. It makes sense. Anyway, about so Hal. where were we going? Oh, we yeah, were talking about Hal and the button and yes. Yeah, so people in on the replica prop forums have um, you know, analyzed. They've published whole blueprints of you know all of these dimensions that are you know mm. very very close to the original original deal. And uh, there's a particular lens that they used for Hal in the movie. It's some Nikon lens. Now, how did they find that out? Uh, I think that's that's like known. That that's was known. Published. Someone was interviewed at yeah. Hal Masters. Yeah, and but if you want to actually get that lens to to build your HAL mm -hmm. replica, which some people have, it can cost you a couple thousand dollars. Oh, right. Yeah, just because it, it is a nice piece mm -hmm. of glass. I might cut a corner there. Yeah. Yeah, and so you know, okay, two thousand dollars for this this glass lens, mm -hmm. or you know, I I don't recall what these cost in the shop, but they're not expensive. Mm -hmm. It's ten bucks or less, mm -hmm. and um, anyway. Sorry, I like went off on a tangent there. That's where the punchline is. This this um, button 
the diameter is like two or three millimeters different than the actual lens. It just happened to be it's that just close. just that close, yeah. Or did it, or the person designing it the actually person, was like, you, ah, know what? you know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> but it's funny, because even this, this bezel around the edge, mm -hmm. um, if you look at the, the oh, film it's prop, it's, it's, you know, there's a bezel there. Mm -hmm. It's really funny how, how similar that came out mm -hmm. to... Um, I'm banking that somebody was bored in the that, designing. I hadn't the, considered yeah. that angle, yeah. you're probably awesome. right. Um, anyway, and then the rest of the thing was, you know, laser cut acrylic, uh, designed around it, and then just for laughs, we put a, a wave shield in there, right? So that when you when you uh, press that big irresistible button, right? Uh, he says how things, right? He says how things. I think I think you had a bit of a conversation. I did with him, um, and and it's there's a video of that we could watch right now, if if you're Fair into enough. it. Hey Hal, I think you dropped something. My mind is going. I can feel it. Hey Hal. Heard about the restaurant on the moon? Nice staff, good food, but just no atmosphere. Stop, Dave. Will you stop? Hey, Hal, define specimen. It's an Italian astronaut. No 9,000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. Hey, Hal, your sister is totally hot. So I installed a fan. And it will stay that way until it fails. I am Buzz Lightyear. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. Hey, hey Hal, I just pre-ordered a Hal 10,000. You're e-waste, buddy. I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Thank you. I laugh every time I see that. I, 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 maybe I'm just, I'm the target demographic. Uh, uh, okay. You were like, eh, you want that? I'm like, yeah, yeah definitely. Anyway, one detail that really threw me about that was the, the patterning, the texture on the, the main plate. The there. brush, the brush I, metal. I, I, I was like, yeah. oh, that's like, that's like a, you know, a dark wood. Oh, like, what is that? Where did that come from? And then when I saw it in person, I'm like, oh, it's actually textured. It's not just a print. Yeah. And then when I read your guide about it and I found out how you made it with acrylic, it is acrylic and you just sandpaper. Sandpaper. Yeah, nothing fancy. Right. The it, trick but is, it looks really, really good. Yeah, if you just do that by hand, it's going to be all swirly. So the trick was just right, of course. tape tape the sandpaper down to the work surface mm -hmm. and slide the acrylic back. Never and forth deviate over. from one axis. Yes, yeah. I. In fact, I think I put a piece of wood down mm -hmm. and just used that as my my straight edge. Right, and, and just got this kind of. I don't know if that was a wood. But or then a, you moved uh, the sandpaper so they didn't have just a small amount of grooves. Right. Yeah, I, I I might have flipped it 180 or something. It's, it's been a, a while. Inspiring little detail, <laughs> process detail. I, I I couldn't I couldn't look past it. But that's not all. If you act now. Oh yeah. We we also brought we, we also brought along here. A collar. Yes. And this is and this is um, in reference to the film Up. Yes. And a humorous dog. Yes. Or Doug. Doug. Yes. Squirrel. Exactly. This is, okay, so this one, this guy, we, we can see. This. Oh yeah, there's. Doug oh yeah, there. there's Doug from the movie. Yeah. So right. he had this collar in the film mm -hmm. that interpreted from dog speak into human speak. So that almost he, a little Hal throwback there. I mean, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. They Endearing, they do a lot of little Kubrick there, references. There might have been films. a spin-off film there where it, it goes mad and you know. That was Wally. Through. Right. Yeah. Okay. Pretty Good. much. Next time we'll talk about that one. Um, but yeah, you were saying uh, about Doug. Oh yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, he has the, this this collar. Actually, all the, all the dogs in the film have this collar that translates from dog speak to people right. speak. Um, it, it probably just made the storytelling a lot easier on mm -hmm. their part. Uh, I would imagine. Yeah, <laughs> than having to pantomime everything. Yep, internal so. dog dialogue and not being shared with the world. Yes, but um, like Ooh. these other props we looked at, it's just it's another one of those iconic things that people look at. Wouldn't that Definitely. Just be so cool if that was real? And this one, although you know, close to real life looking in the movie, was not actually a physical object. Right, because it's 100% CG right. in the film. So, so they, they, they this is the first one that you've done that was not a real object. Right? Yeah, though actually I've built this twice. Okay. And I, I, I built, uh, the first version of it actually was huge. Uh, a friend of mine, he had this Halloween costume, this big dog suit, mm -hmm. and he wanted Doug's mm -hmm. collar. So I, I had built it, you know, big person-sized one, and you could, you could trigger uh, sounds and whatever. And that's great because you have all this space to, to mm -hmm. build things. And so 
like actually building one that would go on an actual dog. Okay, so um, that one was like exaggerated size? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Um, but uh, anyway. Um, a functional one that would... Yeah, this, this actually, this works over, you know, battery's dead right now, but um, works over Bluetooth with your okay. phone, the, the, um, the Adafruit, Blue, Blue Fruit app. Right. Right. Um, you can trigger the different phrases and so, you know, it has mm -hmm. the squirrel and, and uh, my name is Doug and all that. Mm -hmm. um, is, is this the first leather working that you did? No, no, I had done a little bit, a little bit of that before. I'm not real good at it, but... Um, for, for, for prop replicas or something less specific? Um, like cosplay type cosplay stuff, right. yeah. Um, but anyway, this, this prop for me is kind of um, a special thing about it is um, this is the first one that I really did like significant 3D printing on and kind of like okay, right. converted me to... Let's look at it in the overhead. Oh yeah, so let's do that. See the, uh, uh, so, so, the so 3D printed is uh, the light, the indicator light. Yeah, the actually all the these dome. things all stuck the on, the, on the surface. Right, are, even, are, even the rotary switch. Yeah, even, even the, knob. the knob. And right. the reason for that, because like I said, I, I built this prop before, um, all these parts, I had to go to like surplus junk stores mm -hmm. and try to find something that resembled what I was, I was doing. Right. And that gets very time consuming and challenging or you're just not going to find the same, the right. same part. Yeah, it's fun to look, but... You yeah. know, like this one, like a bigger version of this, it turns yeah. out, um, the little um, be looking like grated cheese so. shaker uh, uh, that you see at pizza places, um, that would work good. Uh, okay. This I, I don't. I think I used some uh, turn signal light or something. Okay. You know, it's not spot on. Um, but anyway, um, when it came time to do this again, it's like I don't have time to go hunting junk mm -hmm. stores to do all this stuff. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm not real good at 3D printing, but it's like, well, here's here's my opportunity to mm -hmm. learn doing this for a real project. Yeah, you could have used a, a knob. And, but but you made a, a really. I'd sweet have to go track down a specific to, right, knob. Right, you know, right, if okay. I want to look like I have a large box of knobs at home, so for me, I'm like, I just go in the knob box. Where's your knob box? Yeah, um, I, but yeah, right. Anyway, I I don't. Have, I have like three right. knobs in my mm -hmm. collection. Right, and That's they're all probably sad, good. Yeah, you know. So um, anyway, so this this is just a fake knob. It doesn't even turn. You know, it. Mm. The whole point was it just needs to look like the thing. Right, and it, it makes it's close enough that it makes people happy. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so 3D printing, and, and that, was, that was very much a, a turning point. It's like, I am not going to go hunt garbage anymore. Pretty, pretty liberating, is, huh? It really is, yeah. I would imagine. It's, it's a nice uh, piece of work. I think I Thank know you. some humans who could actually use a functional one of those. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Oh. Um, so, and you haven't just done movie uh, recreations. You've, you've actually morphed things. You've recreated one thing that's normally seen as considerably, considerably larger and made the world's smallest version. I have, yeah. Right. This is can already... I, can I tell the backstory? Yeah, yes. this, is, this is before the world's smallest version. You mean to jump ahead of you on the narrative. <laughs> okay. I'm going to plug this in while we talk about the other one. En petit. Uh, this Men was Cupcade. Well, mm -hmm. is Cupcade. This this is an Adafruit uh, kit. Mm -hmm. um, not currently in in the shop because the board we we used on this, um, it was it was one of the early models of Pi, mm -hmm. uh, model B maybe. Not even the B plus. You know, um, it had a particular arrangement of mounting holes and whatever. And this case was so carefully planned mm -hmm. around those dimensions that when they redesigned the board. Mm -hmm. um, it, just, it didn't fit and couldn't be adapted. And so we kept it around for as long as we had right. some Model B. The pies laying on the bottom here. Yeah. Right. So, um, but it's been really popular, and um, we might, might revisit it um, to make you know, an updated version. But, but, when you, but you, you thought, like, well, we, we built it so tightly around the, uh, the size of one version of the pie. Yeah. And then the Pi Zero came out. Yes. <laughs> And it's still booting right now, <laughs> but uh, th th this 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 was a, a quickie project um, that I wasn't supposed to be working on. I think Lamore like specifically said, "Phil, don't don't worry." Don't on do that. it. Yeah. Back off. Um, it, 
we, we were discussing this particular color OLED and whether or not MAME games would even be playable on it. And Lamar is like, you know, don't even bother. It's, it's, but I'm kind of a curmudgeon. It's like, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. It and can be done. No, actually she's right. Oh. The, the games are, are horribly unplayable. It's so, it's so wee. But it's adorable. It's cool to look at. And so it, I it's just. It's super cool to look at. I love the. Uh, I, I'm going to go put yeah, it on the, on the uh, overhead because it's so um, tiny you can't even see. I, I'm a, a real sucker for the perf board paneling uh, aesthetic myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm what I was doing, um, you know, if I designed any kind of enclosure that sealed this up, it would just make it bigger. Mm -hmm. So, um, in terms of just right. making this as absolutely small as possible, Bare I, I actually use the boards as part of the enclosure. So, um, it does actually play like real MAME arcade games. In it, I mean, it looks really good, but this, what's the resolution of this screen? Uh, this is 96 by 64. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, I know, because I read into it a, a bit, and, uh, scaling was a big deal with right. this. Yes. It, that's some really quality uh, uh, anti-aliasing or it's know, okay. sampling, down it's, sampling. It's okay. Um, it, it's not doing any, like, sharpening filters as it does it, but um, I think... And I describe this in the guide um, when you're when you're playing Tiny Tiny Pac Man or whatever. Mm -hmm. I honestly think you're not really interacting with the game. It's like it's a muscle memory of how the game was okay. played. Yeah. That you look at this little tiny blurry version of it, and, and you sort uh, of project what you already know about. The yeah. Game. So like, okay. what, what do we got here? I can see uh, that. Ms. Ms. Pac Man, I think. I never, I never played much of this Pac-Man, oddly enough. It, it, it's Pac-Man with different mazes and a, a bow in her Put hair. a bow on it. Yeah. That's, yeah. As, that's sort of the originator of put a bow on it. But uh, can you see that? It's a little... If you hit the autofocus... Uh, oh, is that this one here? I think no. that's this one. Here. Actually, it might have been unlocked and then... Well, trust me, there's, it's, it's a little, little wow. tiny... I mean, what was the original resolution of? Uh, 320 by 240. Uh. Oops. Muscle memory has to scale quite a bit, though, too, for those small. Yeah, yeah, it is. Control. It is actually kind of tricky to play because you'll you'll run into stuff. Right. Get it, eaten. It, it's it's a whole new uh, high score challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's um, like a game like Pac Man is fairly forgiving because you like you come to the end of a T mm. on the maze, you're gonna okay. stop. Yeah. But something like uh, Donkey Kong, uh, when when Mario is climbing those ladders. Mm. Uh, in the arcade, you're lining him up within two right. or three pixels. Yeah, I which, hated those ladders. Yeah, when this is when it's shrunk down that tiny and that blurry. Yeah, uh, I couldn't. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're not going to line it up. You're better off. Donkey Kong wasn't a very good game. I think it's overrated. I Donkey Kong Junior, on the other hand, it's a quality piece of entertainment. I think. Personally, I'm okay. projecting again. Yeah, Keeps yeah. Happening. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll Feel just free to move me on. Yeah, no, I just yeah. will point out when I designed the, the cupcake cabinet, mm -hmm. that is the Namco Pac Man shape. I just think oh. that is a really iconic cabinet it, it's design. It's a gorgeous cabinet. And you, you mentioned not being a fan of Donkey Kong. I'm sorry. I think that is one of the more grotesque arcade cabinets. Oh, actually. see? Yeah, there so, you go. so did, did the, we're there. Yeah. Brothers on that one. <laughs> but did they actual arcade cabinets. They had separate shapes for different games. Certainly, like um, I mean, no, for like major Namco, games that controls, like um, Galaga, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man. There were several games that all all shared the same cabinet design. Okay, and then all you right, have right. other other games that were uh, fairly distinctive to each game. I'm but, just admiring uh, it. Yeah, well, I just I I always thought that was um, just a beautiful cabinet design. Is the, did you game. did you take like like Full scale designs and scale them down for this. Like I looked at for, it. I looked right. at it. No, in fact, the, the proportions on this are totally different. Okay. Yeah. But I tried to capture a lot of the same curves and fillets and whatever. Right. Uh, just just to get the capture that that Namco cabinet ism. I say you did. You most certainly did. We uh, agonized over colors and materials mm -hmm. and for weeks. It even ended up having a face on the front. Yeah, for your your coin and yep. start or something like that. But and so but the tiny the yes the little little wee one over the, here. The, the 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 world's smallest meme isn't the only small screen project you've made. 
Uh, no, don't we others. Don't we also others. Did, you also did some pendants. Yes, there was some pendants? jewelry. Yeah, yeah pendants, uh, necklaces, whatever. And these were all uh, collaborations with the Ruiz brothers. Mm -hmm. um, again, kind of following the retro gaming uh, feel. Uh, they they did the three D work for it, so they they came up with these little case designs, and I did the circuit and the code uh, using you know various parts in our shop. Um, you didn't hack a a Mario a Super Mario card. No, no, to this generate, was like, Corey Doctor, this. I mean, a Corey Doctor, a Corey Archangel. Yeah, a Corey Doctor. Yeah. Um, yes, this is modeled after that the the clouds cartridge, right, right. which would just do the Mario clouds mm -hmm. uh, using one of our color color TFTs, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's a it's a tiny thing that you can wear and and shows your your mm -hmm. your Mario ness and and uh, emanates a Zen like piece with a, a retro aesthetic, retro yes. gaming aesthetic. That's a very poetic way of phrasing it. Right, that's how I see it. Yeah. Also, and of course, flying toasters. Yeah, there was another one, and again, the Ruiz, Ruiz brothers themselves. did the three D work. Right. So um, they tried to evoke a bit of a you know Mac uh, Mac SE kind of look, maybe. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then the software is doing the old uh, After Dark flying mm -hmm. toaster approximation. Because if you actually, you, I did go looking up like the original toaster mm. bitmaps or whatever, mm. and they'd just be, they wouldn't fit on that screen. So, so this is all, all redrawn I, to, to look like the flying toasters without actually being right, flying toasters. Right. It's original work. It's an interpretation. Interpretation, right? right. Yeah. All of your pieces are. <laughs> And uh, and yeah, this has a again a poetic and like uh, yeah, that's that's exactly well. the goal. It's it's not something you're going to be playing with twitchy joysticks and buttons. Right. It's just you're going to sit back and relax and be yeah, and everyone around you will see it and and ab absorb the zen. What did you call it? zen like? Piece? Well, I, I took don't. poetic from you. Poetic zen like piece. We yes. can go with that. I like that. Well, I've absorbed a lot of um, zen like piece from the attention to detail and uh, masterful productivity you emanate. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You bet. This is a lot of fun. It is, it is. Shake my hand, I appreciate it. <laughs> Come back again. I will. You've got a lot of other stuff we could talk about. I do, time. I just, I had to pick a subset uh, somewhat randomly, right. I guess you could say. Right. Pseudo random. How appropriate. Yeah, but I do have other projects and maybe we'll talk about some of those. Sounds like a plan. But I like these. These these are nostalgia projects. These are things you look at and you're like, yeah, I remember that. But you can I build remember. these. You can have these. You can. That's that's what I like about it. Thank you for coming.